So the video starts with this little bubble wand that I'm about to completely destroy being used uh, by someone who's clearly too old to be using a Disney bubble wand, but uh, it's... Uh, oh, he's, he's found a bone now. Uh huh. Yeah, the, the adults, I mean, I don't know why they sell these for kids, the adults should just, uh, should just keep them. It's for everybody. Does it explode if you... Well, it can be made to explode if needs be. But that would be considered not suitable for children at that point. It could shoot flames if you want. Anyway, let's take it to bits. So we're at the bench, let's take it apart. Much to the displeasure of my neighbours, Steve and Beth, who thought this was great. They were agitated I was going to take it to bits. And it is very good. So hopefully, well, if it comes apart in a controlled manner, which it may not, I will be able to put it back together again. But if not, if Asda still has these in stock, uh, I'll buy them one. That's the best way to do it. So let's take the screws out of this. So this is a Disney franchise type product. It has the Toy Story logo on it. And they had another one that was this a pink star. That's probably where I'll get them. Uh, I got this one because it was more visible what was inside as it is. But it's really quite stylish. The liquid reservoir has this little sort of well, here is the liquid reservoir. Let's spill water everywhere. This is gonna get this is gonna be so messy. The thing incidentally has two LEDs that point out the top that emit white light from the bubble nozzle. And it also has three LEDs on each side, red, green, and blue, with a little circuit. Well, well, we'll find that. We'll take it out. That makes them just do that sort of uh, flashing LED thing. You know, the classic red, green, blue, red, green, blue, sign magenta, yellow, flash, flash, flash. That sort of thing. But what's interesting is the mechanism in the middle, which is very interesting. It's quite a clever one. Now, is this going to come apart in a controlled manner? The, the base is coming apart in a semi-controlled manner. The screws are out. Is it going to pop apart? Or is it glued? I think it might be glued to make it watertight. This is a bad sign. Is it going to pop? Yeah, it, it's come apart. Oh, the whole thing's coming apart. This is what we want. How long before liquid suddenly pours out some random orifice? Here's a bit we're interested in. It's the bubble generator. And it's using a technique I've not really seen before, uh, which is good, it's very interesting. So let's get this out. And the circuit board, does it just come off the top or does it slide over the side? Oh, it would if uh, those pipes weren't on, but the pipes are on. Okay, so let's start the pipes. I'll zoom down this so you can see. As with all bubble generators, it has a blower. There's the blower there. And it's powered by a motor that also has a gear drive onto a peristaltic pump. So the dip tube in the bubble liquid draws liquid up this pipe through the peristaltic pump and it feeds it to an outer ring here. I think I'm going to have to break this apart. I don't think there's any way to get this open without destroying it. That's a shame, but that's okay because that's why we got it, isn't it? Uh, the peristaltic pump feeds liquid in and then there's another gear takeoff from the motor. It's quite complex and it's got a little wiper arm with two sections and the wiper arm just takes a, there's a continual flow of liquid over that and the wiper arm just continually smears it between the, that little cross separator in the middle alternating. So initially you get the bubbles blowing out one side then the other uh, or if it's not, the liquid's not fully filled it up yet you'll get bursts of the bubbles from one side as it just creates the film in one side. Let's see if we can get these pipes off. The pipes have come off. Let's see if we can get the circuit board off now. Oh, the circuit board is off now. This is good. There's a little hose going in there. There's a little hose going down there. This is better, this is better. This, oh, this isn't gonna pull out because that, that is a peristaltic pump. Uh, that little hose can pull out there though. Nice silicone hosing. This is covered in bubble fluid. Right, tell you what, I'm going to zoom out of it because I'm probably missing half the action here. Right, this is where it does get broken because I'm going to try and prise the clips off here. Well, that's actually opening. He said with genuine surprise. 
And there's a clip at the other side. And that, oh good lord, look at all the cogwheels. That was maybe a bad idea. That was a bad idea, but not to worry. We're interested in this bit up at the top with its little wiper arm and the little fluid reservoir thing. So the liquid is literally coming up one of those pipes. It's flowing in the reservoir. What stops it just going straight down into the blower mechanism, right? Tell you, oh, I see what it is. It's basically just filling up and draining back down to the bottom, but that little wiper arm is wiping round to create that film. You can actually see it creating a film as I do it. And that's what allows the airflow to actually blow the bubbles. This whole thing is just coming to bits. It's quite neat. Right, give me one moment. I'm just going to take a closer look at this. One moment, please. Oh, this looks super sophisticated. The chamber from the bottom looks like this. As the two pipes come in, one feeds a drizzle of liquid from the peristaltic pump and it forms a sort of meniscus uh, that sits around this collar. And if there, there's too much, it'll flow around it and it'll actually drain down this one and down to the, uh, the reservoir again. But in the middle of that is a rotating arm, which is just basically a little straight peg with a curved section on it and it continually just wipes round in that area carrying the liquid round to create that sort of I'm guessing just a bulge of liquid at the sides there and uh, in doing so that uh, also scoops some of it and spreads it across this uh, spreader bar here and wipes it round creating first uh, a film on one side and then a film on the other but maybe it's the airflow helps this or it's just purely the supply of liquid is so slow and uh, balanced with the size of these holes and the drainage holes that it just basically doesn't just spill down the inside of the unit because you'd think it would just spill over here and down into the air path, but maybe it's that airflow that stops that. Certainly, the inside of the air path in here is absolutely clear. There's not even a drainage hole in it. No liquid has got down there at all. That is very strange. I think a lot of engineering has gone into this, but that wouldn't surprise me because A, it's a Disney gadget, and B, it's um, bubble making is a huge industry. You know, people love bubbles, as demonstrated by Steve and Beth when uh, they were playing around with it. So that is it. It's one motor has the uh, function of the peristaltic pump here. Oh, the peristaltic pump. Oh, well, there is a peristaltic pump with its little rollers on it. Look at that. Uh, with a silicon hose. And uh, that rotates and squishes the liquid through at a controlled rate. Um, and uh, there's actually two little rollers. One is down there. And that feeds it up to the end, creates that meniscus at the edge. And the little wiper arm just keeps spreading it to create the little bubble film that the air then blows into bubbles. That is super clever. That is a very neat device. Well, that's made an absolutely huge mess. I do not recommend taking your Disney bubble wand apart. It's extremely hard to put back together again. And, and you may, as I did, find that when you put it back together again, you get the hose around the peristaltic pump the wrong way. But it is now working and blowing bubbles. So uh, you can put them back together. Well, that's making even more of a mess. But as I say, I really do not recommend taking your Disney bubble wand apart. It's quite a complex rebuild, particularly when just about every single cogwheel falls out of the gearbox.